Hi, I'm Erwan, and today I'll be showing you how to make hard tacos the way I really enjoy. So while researching these recipes, I completely realized that a lot of Mexicans actually don't consider hard tacos to be proper tacos. Um, I, I believe from the research that I did find, uh, a lot of people believe that it started um, in Southern California by Mexican immigrants that brought this with them from Mexico. So. It's one of those dishes that you're not really sure what's authentic or what's not, but then obviously, um, you know, it took a life of its own in the US and it became such a huge thing and now you can find hard tacos everywhere. We're here in the Philippines and hard tacos are really popular as well, especially in this one chain called Pancake House. Um, it's that traditional one with iceberg lettuce, some ground beef um, and some cheese. In the Philippines, we don't have much access to Mexican ingredients or Mexican restaurants. Um, so it's actually quite difficult to find certain of the ingredients that I use today. Um, but you can always find some substitutes and we'll make sure to put them down below as well. The first thing I wanted to do was to try to make the hard taco myself. And after looking at a recipe online, I thought that it looked quite simple. It was just a mixture of masa harina, which is corn uh, flour. Then we add some all-purpose flour, some water, some baking powder, salt, some oil, very basic dough. That comes together, you put it out in kind of like this rugged, smooth bowl. You let it rest for 10 minutes, and then you're supposed to flatten it out again and start um, rolling it out. I realized very quickly, even though I followed the recipe step by step, it started cracking and crumbling. So I wasn't sure if it was the ingredients that I used, or maybe just because I'm not used to using that kind of corn flour or masa. Um, and then it looked okay, it was coming together okay, and then I fried it in the oil and then it started disintegrating a little bit. <laughs> Um, so this is the internet and I'm not gonna lie to you guys So I did try to make my own hard shell tacos and it didn't work out. So the next best thing I didn't want to use these Pre-made store-bought ones because I feel like they're so small um, and I want to make hard shell tacos that are quite large um, In terms of what I can pack into them So what I did was I grabbed some whole wheat tortillas which I had in the fridge These are soft flour tortillas and I use that same process by just frying it in some really hot oil until they started turning a little brown and puffing up a little bit. Turn that around, so maybe 20 seconds per side. Um, then you wanna make sure to grab kind of like a kitchen towel and you put um, some kitchen paper on it. And then you put the fried tortilla on it and then you use something to weigh it down to kind of form that crevice. And that's what gives you one of these. And the beauty about this is that you can really pack it up to the brim. Um, so that's one option. You can also do this in the oven if you want to. I wanted to do something Japanese style, so we have like a spicy tuna hard shell taco. Start off with your dressing, some Japanese mayo. You can then use some sriracha. Um, I'm using a chili garlic, which I really enjoy. Then we're gonna add some sesame oil. To that, you're gonna add some other ingredients and then you're gonna season the whole thing with some soy sauce before tossing in your tuna. It's just gonna really give it a beautiful coating and a beautiful flavor. Once that's ready, slice some scallions very thinly, slice up some cabbage very thinly. You can toss the cabbage with like a Japanese sesame dressing. And then all that gets put together inside your taco shell. Add in some sliced avocados. This looks so good. Mm, perfect combination. You know how spicy tuna usually has like tempura bits floating in there of the tempura dough? The crunchy tortilla takes its place, so it really works. So birria is a very popular stew in Mexico, which got even more popular when someone started making birria uh, tacos on the internet and these are like flour tacos with the birria inside and then fried in its oil with some cheese so delicious um, so I did my take on that for the hard shell taco it's just a really deep flavorful dish 
um, that I thought would be perfect with the crunch of that hard shell tortilla. So it's actually really quite simple to put together. There's one element of it that's quite hard to find. If you can't find like fresh guajillo or poblano peppers, which in the Philippines, almost impossible. I had some dried ones, which are perfect. You just soak those in some boiling water for about 10 minutes until they get soft, and then you can clean them out and remove some of the seeds that are in there. That's gonna be added to some fried up um, onions, garlic, and tomatoes. You can also use canned whole tomatoes if you want. Then you're gonna add some very basic spices, um, some Mexican oregano, some cumin, some ginger powder. We can even add some garlic powder, some onion powder, up to you. A little bit of apple cider vinegar for that kick of acidity. All that goes into a blender until really nice and smooth. You're also gonna fry off your beef. You can use brisket, you can use ribeye if you wanna go crazy. Um, you can use chuck. And I'm just gonna fry it off, give it, give it a nice sear. If you're lazy, you don't necessarily have to do this step um, at all. Then you're gonna combine our blended kind of mix with our beef. Um, all of that gets tossed together and then you can cook that stovetop two hours, two hours and a half, or in your instant pot or your pressure cooker for about 45 minutes. Make sure to add a little bit more of your beef stock to make sure that it doesn't dry out while cooking. After 45 minutes, you'll see that it really easily shreds, which is exactly what we want. And then we can start building our taco. So I wanna keep this nice and simple, lots of beef, a little bit of onions, just for some balance, some cheddar cheese, and then some chopped up lettuce. And then that gets dipped into the broth. I was supposed to wait and get a shot of all of them together, but since this is a birria, then it's saucy, I don't want it to break through the crunchiness of the tortilla. So I'm gonna go ahead and try this one already. Oh, excuse mess. Let's dip it in. Ooh, hoo, hoo, look at that. Mm. One more dip. Yes. Mmm. And that crunch is everything. So good. For a Korean inspired taco, I wanted to do like a Korean fried chicken, but I realized that I've done that so many times uh, before. So we changed it up by making like a chicken bulgogi. So we're using some thigh meat here. Uh, cut it up and then fry that off in some oil. Make sure your pan's nice and hot. Then you can make a quick sauce with some brown sugar, some honey, some soy sauce, some mirin, some grated ginger, and some grated garlic. When your chicken starts developing a nice color and some crust in there, deglaze the pan with that sauce and really make sure you kind of scrape up all those beautiful bits of flavor. That sauce is gonna thicken out really quickly and when you start seeing the pan getting revealed to really the, the sauce is clinging onto the chicken, that's good. Take it off and then let that chill for a little bit. I needed something to hold that chicken together um, so I decided to make a really quick kimchi cheese fried rice. Chop up some kimchi, fry that off with some white rice and then add in some cheddar cheese until melted. Couldn't be easier than that. For that acidity, a quick scallion salad. So chop up some scallions. We're gonna add some sesame oil and some gochujaru, some red pepper flakes. You can add some black pepper if you want. And then just toss everything together. All you gotta do now is combine everything. This one I am excited about. If you were to look at like an American hard taco, a lot of them have like a black refried black beans on the bottom. 
the kimchi fried rice plays that part, plays that role. It really anchors the whole thing and makes sure your chicken doesn't move. And that scallion salad. Mm. So good. If I had to choose my favorite one out of the three, it'd be really difficult, but I think this is the one. I'll see you guys next time.